Um, all right, nobody's in here yet, so I'm just going to wait a minute. It is a, uh, a Thursday, so I probably should have done this on the weekend, but oh well. Um, anyways, for those that watch this later on, welcome to Katarina's Garage. My name is Katarina Lloyd, and actually, um, my next giveaway, I'm doing here a live reveal of what it is. You can see on the thumbnail what it is, but, you know, it will be something that a lot of you guys would probably be interested in. So, you know, and it's just been kind of sitting around, and I didn't really pay much for it, so I don't mind it going. Um, I was going to give it to other people and just, I just never got around to doing it. So, um, yeah, anyways, the, um, the next giveaway, it's actually something overall weight is heavier, but it's only one item instead of a bunch, right? Um, which if you didn't check it out, uh, I did a live stream just a few days ago of the winners of the last, um, um, the last giveaway which was a few things that i had lying around um some old badges and stuff like that uh, a couple of stickers and whatnot but the um i'm just waiting for more people to come in here so um yeah um not sure who's watching right now but uh, appreciate you uh taking the time out of your evening to uh check it out um yeah i'm not i should plan these a little better but i just haven't yet um yeah because the, the last uh, live that I did was actually fairly decent. It was the live giveaway, which um, it was, like I said, a, a Ford V8 badge off the truck. <laughs> um, there was a Honda badge off of the Civic. It was off the grill. And there was a couple of stickers. And there was one other thing. I can't remember what it was. But um, yeah. Anyways, well, I, I could show this a couple of times, I suppose. So who's ever watching here? Um, the giveaway is this carburetor. Um, oh, okay, perfect. Uh, hey, no worries, Jesse. I understand that. Um, and hey, I appreciate you being here. You're the only one watching right now. So, uh, yeah. But anyways, is, is this carburetor actually? And it's a, uh, it's honestly a nice old, uh, Holly carb. It's an, actually in very good shape overall. Um, I'm sure that with a little bit of, uh, like it, it needs to be gone through, I think. But, uh, you know, you've got the, uh, nice 600 cfm carb um that you know it's got the vacuum secondaries that you can see there right i think or maybe not um but you know it's got a manual choke on it and stuff like that and this came off of a late 60s ford motor it's a 600 cfm holly i'm trying to remember the exact numbers like the, the exact model but it's honestly a very good carb and it's heavy because it's an old school carb because you know newer carbs are much lighter than that but uh yeah um so that's gonna be the next giveaway actually and uh well yeah i'm surprised yeah waiting for more people because <laughs> it's kind of awkward when it's only one person watching i do appreciate you uh coming out though uh who was that that said that uh there we go uh, 55 Chevy guy, that's who it was, there we go, I had to change my settings there really quick, um, but, yeah, so, you know, I, I did this a little awkward of a time, though, too, so I'll give it that, um, because not at the top of the hour or anything like that, I didn't let anybody know, um, oh, hey, we got two people now, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, I'm usually a little better at these lives, but to be fair, I, this is only my second live, so, I have done other lives on other people's channels, but, and there was no structure to those ones either. Not that there's any structure to this. It's just, hey, live giveaway reveal of what's going to be given away next. And, yeah, because I was going to actually give this. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it probably would, actually. Um, you know, and, yeah. It's honestly, it's a very good carburetor. It needs to be gone through, like, you can tell some of the bolts and stuff like that are loose. You know, I haven't tightened it or anything. It's needs to be cleaned because you take a look inside it's very dirty and stuff like that it's just been sitting around for i don't even know how long i picked this up um actually if you guys remember the capri that i that i had for less than 24 hours i actually picked uh this up for that but of course i got rid of the capri and traded it for lilo my 86 convertible mustang that has since been sold but 
Yeah, and I, I miss that car. Especially on days like it was today. Oh my god. It was a scorcher. It was like 34 degrees here in Century. And I went out to Olds and actually I was checking out. It's a, there is a post actually you can see on YouTube itself um, that I showed off a car that I checked out today. Which was, and I, there was only three pictures that I posted there. But it would say 79 Pinto Wagon. Very cool car. 2.3 uh, inline four and four speed manual. <laughs> ah, Robert's Garage. Well, who knows? You might. I mean, you won the last one. Um, and actually, this Pinto is a one owner car that um, it's only got like a hundred and what was it, a hundred and 28,000 kilometers on it total. So pretty nice, honestly. I'm definitely very excited for that. Um, when I was checking it out, like and this is only if it goes cheap enough for me to actually buy it. And we'll see if it does or not. I don't expect there to be a lot of action on it, but who knows, there might be. Um, yeah, and so for those of you that are just joining in, um, thank you for uh, checking out the live here. And like I said, the live reveal is for the giveaway is this holly 600 cfm carburetor that came off of a late or uh, a late 60s ford i don't know i can't remember the exact designation for this carburetor but um these could be put on anything from a 302 right up into the 390s and i believe 428 so um and you can take a look you know of the bore and everything and if this would interest you again it just needs to be gone through but it's a very good carburetor and it's heavy because again old carburetors they were just a lot heavier than the newer stuff right so this thing's probably a good 25 ish pounds um but yeah it's, it's quite hefty but um you know so i'm excited to reveal the next giveaway here so uh um hope that you guys can uh yeah, um, win that. And how you enter to win this, it's very simple. It'll be the same thing as last time. So uh, you'll have to um, be subscribed here on YouTube, which m most of you are. Uh, it, Mustang Guy, it is a 600 CFM carburetor. Um, most of you guys, like I know you're subscribed, and everybody that's here, I'm pretty sure, is subscribed at the moment. Um, but you need to be subscribed on YouTube and then. Follow my Instagram, which is katarinas.garage, and basically all you need to do there is put, um, um, sorry, my brain's not functioning. Put your YouTube name in the comments of the post that I make, and let's just say for September 1st, I will hopefully do a live giveaway then. I might wait until a weekend. I'm not sure if September 1st is a live weekend. I, you'll know in the post when I make it of the exact cutoff date and when I'm going to be doing it. Um, but yeah, I haven't made the post yet. So, you know, don't don't leave to try and find the post. It's not happened yet. But I promise you, um, there will be a post on Instagram about it. There will also be a post if you want to check it out on my Facebook page, which is Katarina's Garage as well. And yeah. Um, and as well, I see that five of you have hit the like button. I definitely appreciate it. It helps the YouTube algorithm to, for more people to actually see the video. Um, and yeah, so I am very excited for this giveaway, actually. Um, you know, the, the, the last one, don't get me wrong, I was excited for as well. But um, this is more decluttering because I, I have actually a bunch of stuff that you guys just haven't really seen. Because I don't think I've shown this on my channel, this, this carburetor. Because I bought this off a guy, he had a bunch of carburetors, and mostly quadrajets is what he had. Um, and then there was just this old Holly sitting in there, and I'm like, well, how much do you want for that? And he told me 20 bucks, and just like, done. I, I immediately paid that, because I know this carburetor, even as it sits, it's probably worth 100 bucks. So, you know, worst case scenario, I was just going to sell it. But instead, now I'm giving it away to you lovely people. So, uh, yeah. Um, very excited for this one, and... Hopefully this carburetor will go to a, um, oh God, another person asking about the box of my truck. Sorry. Uh, um, just somebody messaged me there. Um, uh, I do have a, there is a thrift store that does accept donations and stuff like that. 
And hey, um, old school, if you did a dual carb setup on your Civic, that would actually be pretty cool, to be honest. I, I dig uh, a dual carb setup on anything. Hey, every, I think everything that can use a four barrel properly needs a four barrel. Um, and your Mustang, yeah, it needs at least 600 CFM, if not, probably bigger. But um, yeah, because you have, I think you have a built 302 or 351. I can't remember what you have because it's it's been a while since I've seen your stuff. Like I, I've seen a couple of your things, but I follow so many people. I forget who has what 100%. I know your Mustang is the 60s, like it's a 67, I want to say. Um, fastback, which is gorgeous, but, uh, yeah. Um, you know, and actually to finish off, okay, 65, sorry, I thought that was 67, I don't know why. Um, yeah, so, you know, and actually this past weekend, uh, if you guys didn't know, I was actually at a pig roast here in Sundry. Honestly, great time, um, bunch of people were drinking, there was about 70 or so there. I sadly didn't win the 50-50, but that's fine. Um, I did make connections with a couple of other people, and there will actually be a really bitchin' uh, Mustang here on the channel soon. It is a 66 Coupe, which actually there's pictures of that on my Instagram if you want to go check that out. It's a blue um, <laughs> Teleporchetta. See, and I, I, I have heard that term. I didn't realize that that was for uh, pigs. That's um, but yeah, and this year they did the roast a little differently. They usually roast it over a fire, but instead they actually put it in the smoker, which made a big difference. But unfortunately, um, the pig afterwards wasn't very photogenic, but it tasted way better. So there's that. Because um, the, the pig went from, hey, you know, it's being about that big to like that. <laughs> you know, so it happens. And it seemed like there was a lot more fat, which I wasn't a big fan of. But hey, I ate some of its head and it tasted freaking fantastic. Okay, so you haven't seen that 66. I think if you did, but, you know, you never know. I, I, anytime there's a first-gen Mustang, you're going to be all over it, I'm sure. Or even any Mustang, really, because I know you love mine. Um, and, yeah, and actually for the last giveaway, I haven't sent out Robert's Garage's stuff yet because he was the one that won the last giveaway. Um, but it will come. Actually, the only time I'll be able to do it is tomorrow, I think. So it's got to happen tomorrow. Uh, no updates on the Civic yet, unfortunately. Um, the, uh, actually, there is one update, and I'll share that on my channel. I completely forgot about this. Yesterday, I was driving through Calgary, and actually, the master cylinder in the car honestly has a bunch of corrosion, and there's some goop that's actually in it, and it just, uh, it, it's, it's bad. It's very bad. So, I can't track down a new one. And I really didn't want to rebuild the old one. So I actually found a guy. This was, honestly, I paid for this over a month ago. And I kind of forgot about it. And then I was just like, wait. Uh, no, Rock Auto is out of stock. They've been out of stock for months on that. So you can't get one, honestly. And Civic Garage doesn't have one either that I found. So, yeah, it's I can't find new ones that are in stock anywhere. So instead... I paid for, it was actually a used one, like this guy was parting out a Civic and he had a couple of parts left over and as soon as I saw this, he's just like 50 bucks and I snapped that right up, it came with a brake booster as well. And it's in much better shape than the one that we have in the car, so it probably works and it'll be fine. But uh, we might be piecing a couple things together here and there. But still, um, there will be a video on that later. Uh, it's in the back of the Civic right now. And yeah, so it hasn't been installed yet, which will happen on camera. Um, yeah, and for those just joining, thank you for uh, joining the live stream. I see currently seven people. It's been jumping around for seven to eight people. If you can, hit that like button if you haven't yet. Every little bit helps me to uh, grow the channel and for more people to see my content. Um, but yeah, and for those watching that um, haven't seen it, this is the giveaway. Now, this came off of a late 60s Ford um, engine, anything from a 302 up to, I believe, a 428. That's what the numbers say. I can't quite figure it out. It's anywhere between a 67 to 69, from what I can tell. Um, and it's a very nice carburetor. This is a Holley Carb 
that all the linkages are here and everything. You can see those. Um, it just needs to be gone through, needs to be cleaned. It probably needs new gaskets and stuff like that. And as you can tell, you know, some of the bolts are like back out and stuff like that. That are not, it makes it not very tight, right? So, you know, just a carb kit. And <laughs> your Mustang said dibs. <laughs> well, to be honest, it would be cool to, to see that. Um, hello, Real Slacker. Welcome to the live stream. I appreciate you uh, coming out. And, um, yeah. Um, but, ah! <laughs> oh, God, having a fun day here. Um, but, yeah, and now there's ADV. I, I definitely appreciate everybody coming out and take, taking a look. So, yeah, this carburetor, like I said, uh, late 60s Ford engine. It um, is 600 CFM, and it'll be a great carburetor for somebody. I am sure of it. And it's an old school carburetor, which is kind of nice. You don't... Um, you don't find these carburetors like and I actually was checking out this carb at um, there was a oddly enough it was a woman that put up the ad it was actually her husband's stuff and um, well it was just this holly carburetor and it was actually nearby I only drove I think it was like eight kilometers to go see it oh hey straight six fan I appreciate you uh, coming to see mine as well um yeah that was honestly a great chat i wish i could have been there at the beginning but i was busy out in olds checking out that pinto like i mentioned in the chat and i was doing a little bit of grocery shopping so i couldn't have been there at the beginning but you know at least i saw a little bit of that and i'll catch up on the entire live stream probably after we're done here which i don't know how long it's gonna go on for but uh for those of you joining um if you haven't already actually a uh, straight six fan that just uh posted um they do live stream on their channel i believe it's every thursday and their live streams are pretty good actually this week uh they had one of my favorite people to see is actually liv scaffaldi i think her name is I, I can't remember her last name how to pronounce that but she has a bitch and firebird and she does ls's but she carves her ls's so you know if you don't like the ls maybe you'll like the carbureted aspect of that and she has, I'm trying to remember what year, I think her Firebird is a 71. Uh, it is burgundy and it has a black fiberglass front clip on it. It looks really cool. And uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, hey, Novitas. Uh, appreciate you coming to check out the live. Okay, yeah, so it, it is a 71. Um, yes, the Pinto that I was talking about actually in the live, and I understand there was a bunch of comments, you couldn't see them all, that's fine. Um, but... That Pinto is a 1979 Pinto wagon that has a 2.3 uh, Lima with the four-speed manual in it. So it is a variant of a top loader, but it's not, you know, the bitchin' top loader from the 60s. It's a much weaker top loader. But, uh, yeah, it'll be very cool. I checked that out today. Uh, there's actually a post on my YouTube channel. Scafidi. Okay, that's that's how it's spelled. That, that's how it's said. Okay, cool. Because, yeah, I, I've talked to her a couple times, and I do want to go actually see, like, we're going to plan something at some point uh, to meet each other. It's just, uh, you know, there's a bit of distance, and with, you know, COVID and the border and stuff like that, and me not having money, her not really having a ton of money either, it's been rather difficult for us to go meet each other, but eventually we will. Um, so, but anyways, thank you, uh, everybody, for uh, coming on to the channel um to see the live and of course i'll show it again because you know there's now new people that i can see in the chat and everything the what i'm giving away this time which you guys will like this it is a holly carburetor that is a 600 cfm carburetor um it got all the linkages and and stuff like that on it it's honestly in very nice shape it just needs to be gone through and cleaned new gaskets stuff like that put in i bought this over a year ago and if you guys remember the Capri deal that I was doing, uh, because that had the crappy CFI system on it, I was going to put this on that 302. And yeah, then I traded off the Capri and for the Mustang and all that jazz. <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Novitas. Um, yeah, this is, uh, okay. Regardless, you know, um, for those, though, that are interested, oh, hey, old school, thanks for checking it out, and uh, I will. Hope to see you in a later 
live or video and stuff like that because I know you comment all the time. And uh, yeah, enjoy the rest of your week as well. I appreciate it. Thanks for coming up. Um, but yeah, for any of those that are interested in winning this carburetor, I will put out a post on Instagram, which you follow my Instagram at katarinas.garage. And then I hope you're all subscribed to my channel. Um, <laughs> yep, gotta love Canada. Um, anyways, I'll put a post out of the giveaway for this if anybody wants to enter it. And all you have to do is be following my Instagram and you just comment your YouTube name. Um, that's it. That's all you'll have to do. It'll also be on my Facebook page um, that is... Katarina's Garage as well. And yeah, which if you guys aren't following any of those, you know, you'll see a slightly different content than my YouTube, but for the most part, it is promoting my YouTube channel as well. So, um, but yeah, like for example, this weekend, I'm going to be at my cousin's wedding. So there will be some content on those of my, uh, <laughs> of the wedding. Um, do cars... <laughs> Hi, you smarty. <laughs> Ah, no, but we love our maple syrup, though, you know, and proper maple syrup. Uh, don't get me wrong, Aunt Jemima's good and everything, but uh, if you haven't had proper maple syrup, it is... And yes, if that is actually a um, maple syrup and whiskey is actually a delicacy here in Canada. And we have maple flavored whiskeys and rice, and it's freaking fantastic. Um, back when I could drink, I absolutely loved to drink, uh, the maple flavored rice. <laughs> ah, and hey, yeah, gotta love louvers. And I don't know what I'm going to do with my plastic louvers when I'm done with them. I have considered potentially giving them away, but there is a caveat to that. Anybody that won that would have to come pick them up. I am not shipping those out because they are so, so expensive for shipping. So, you know, my, because... I'm getting the metal ones made, so these plastic ones, I'm not going to have any use for them, right? So, yeah. Um, and I'm not going to go get another fox body to do that with. <laughs> hey, you can't actually run um, a carbureted vehicle off of whiskey. It won't run that well for very long, but you can do it. <laughs> In a pinch for, you know, if you run out of gas. Yeah, and... Well, you, you actually have the benefit of having a more common car and a common version of it that, you know, they actually made proper metal louvers because they never made, nobody to my knowledge has ever made metal louvers for a Fox body that is a notchback. And that is a struggle. That's been a struggle for me, actually, because I, I love louvers. And luckily, I'm actually getting these built for free. Um, in exchange for basically promoting the crap out of this guy who actually, he also makes louvers for, um, what does he make louvers for? Vegas and Monza's as well. And he makes, uh, different, I think it's front suspension or K members and stuff like that. It's really cool, honestly. I don't know, I can't remember 100% what all he makes, but he does this all by hand and just, absolutely. Um... I mean, they probably are, to be honest, but at least you can find louvers easier for a Trans Am than you can a notchback Mustang, um, Fox body, because they are very hard to find. Um, and they only made, because I finally found the numbers actually for years made, not how many they actually made though. Uh, Willpack was the only company to make louvers, and that's what I have on my car. Um, and they only produced them from 19 uh i think it was 1980 to 1982. that's it it was two year run uh they didn't sell a ton of them back then because unfortunately um not many people bought the notchbacks but now the notchbacks are highly coveted and people want louvers so i've had people like when i first got them it took um how long did that take like I, I would look for two years and finally found those. And then uh, I had people saying that it took them almost 20 years to even see anybody that found any. Um, ah, crap. I didn't see. Hang on. Uh, 
There we go. Okay, that's better. Um... <laughs> oh, definitely. I I understand that. Like, I'm uh, I'm a big Ford gal at this point. I don't know why. I've always loved my Mopars. And actually, to answer Mark's question, my f absolute favorite car that is my dream car. Mm. Sorry is a 1970 Dodge Coronet Super V, specifically if I can find one in Panther Pink. But it doesn't have to be a Super V. <laughs> you know, it could just be a 70 Coronet. This Panther Pink would be freaking awesome. Um, and Panther Pink is paint code FM3. And they're very, very rare and very sought after, actually. So they only made uh, a few hundred of them. And any Panther Pink Mopars I want yeah, I know, right? Um, and yeah, and I can't wait for you to be moved in too, to your new place and have your garage and everything. That'll be freaking sweet for that. Um, and I just saw somebody else just joined. See, the problem is my chat is disappearing, so I, I don't know how I had it last time where it stayed every time. So now I can only see it when somebody types. Um, and then I can scroll up afterwards. But um, yeah, so for those of you just joining the live stream, I appreciate it. If you can, hit the like button. Every little bit helps me to uh, see, for more people to see my channel and this video in particular as well, because these live streams actually do help me with my ultimate goal of getting uh, monetized, because all I need right now is watch time hours, not subscribers or views or anything like that. So yeah, and I'm very close. I'm only like 300 watch time hours away or something like that. So, so close. Um, but anyways, for those of you that have, uh, <laughs> yes, they did. Uh, they were actually called high impact colors and the high impact colors were sassy grass green, otherwise known as sublime. Um, they had hemi orange and they had panther pink. I'm trying to remember if plum crazy purple happened to be part of that or not, but I think it was. And yeah. So anyways, um, I love Mopar back then, and I love AMCs back then, too. Um, because, you know, like a close second. Um, oh, from Italy. Nice to see you, uh, Girk's Music. That is awesome. Um, and as well, um, so for you guys joining... Oh, God. Okay, yeah. Hang on. There we go. Um, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you guys coming out. Um, well, actually, Plum Crazy Purple in 1970 was actually the most popular color that was put on any Mopar, period. So it was a very popular color. It was something like 70% of all Mopars in 1970 were, pre were uh, Plum Crazy Purple. So, uh, yeah. But for those that are just joining and are wondering what the... Um, Oh yeah, I'll definitely be um, figuring out moderators here in the future. I should have been figuring that out before I did this, but um, yeah. Uh, <coughs> ugh, hate my health. But anyways, ah, and now I am my eyes are watering. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah, hey, I love my Mopars. 100%. I've always been a Mopar chick. It's just lately I've been with, uh, um, just lately I've been into Fords. And, but the thing is, the Fords are cheaper than the Mopars, so that's why I kind of went to Fords. And I, I do love them, right? But anyways, for those of you that don't know, this is the giveaway, which is a Holly carburetor that is a four barrel. It is 600 CFM, and it came off of a late 60s, um, Ford V8 engine. I believe it was 1967 to 1969. I can't remember the model designation. <laughs> Impossible. <laughs> you know, it's funny that you know that reference. That is hilarious. Um, yes, and because of my, you know, yeah, that's my ringtone. Anyways, um, so this carburetor, uh, it's actually in very good shape, but it does need to be gone through. It needs to be cleaned out. It probably needs new gaskets and stuff like that. And, um, you know, it's got the vacuum secondaries, which you can see here. And honestly, it's in very good shape. All the linkages are still here. There's nothing missing. It just, again, just 
I'm not giving you a carp kit with it. You have to go get your own carp kit and go through it and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, this is the giveaway. Um, and the post isn't up yet on my Instagram, but there will be a post on my Instagram. So if you can follow my Instagram at katarinas.garage, um, you won't miss any other um, giveaways. And the details will be in the post there, which will be very simple, honestly, and I'll tell you what the details are now. Because basically, what you'll have to do is... <coughs> right. Um, you'll have to be following my Instagram, um, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and all you have to do is on that Instagram post itself, or even on my Facebook page, which is Ken Rainer's Garage as well, um, just type in your YouTube name. That's all you have to do. And if you don't have a specific channel, just put in your actual name that you pop up in the chat in the comments. And yeah. <laughs> ah, not giving that one away. Trust me, it's worth too much. I'll be selling it um, actually fairly soon. Because uh, exciting news, actually, on that front. Um, I will be... If you guys have seen the Junkyard Tour Part 2 video that I did... And that goes with all the stuff that's in the back of Greg's property there. Um, finally talked to Jim again, and he's going to be out again in the next couple of weeks. And we're going to be pulling everything out, and we are, and I'm going to be going through them. There's going to be a bunch of YouTube content on these cars, and going to sell a, the bulk of them. The only ones that are off limits, and I think I mentioned it in the video there was there's a 59 or 58 apache back there there's a 57 chevy pickup truck there's a couple of 55 bel airs and there's a bunch of rabbits that he's not sure on what he is going to if he's going to keep those or not he has an affinity for rabbits his dad actually loved old datsuns um and yeah there's about eight rabbits i believe one's a convertible that's actually in pretty good shape and there is a unicorn of a rabbit back there if you guys don't know the Volkswagen Rabbits, the Unicorn is a two-door um, diesel five-speed. I don't know what year it is, but that they are so hard to find in a two-door with the diesel, and especially with the five-speed as well. That thing was, and those get amazing gas mileage, honestly. That'd be a car like I would be interested in for a daily driver because you can go basically about 1,200 kilometers on a tank. Oh, your stepfather owns an old boneyard. That is cool. And actually, um, fairly soon as well, because now I finally have a little more freedom um, with stuff because I don't have as much obligations around here anymore. I'll be traveling a lot more. And there is, I've told you guys about this boneyard before. Um, this boneyard, and I can't wait to get down there and see what all he has. Your, like, you will see my first reaction of seeing this collection because... It is a, um, this Boneyard is near Medicine Hat. Um, it is all classic cars. Like, I haven't seen anything modern from the pictures that I've been sent. So I only know a couple of vehicles in there. Um, but there's over 600 cars. They're all basically like 80s and back. Um, he, have that, he even has stuff in the 30s, I believe, too. So, you know, like 30s to about 80s, right? Very, very cool collection. And I will be filming all of it. Um, there's going to be multiple videos on that because going through a 600 car collection is going to take a while. <laughs> and there's some vehicles that I'm going to want to do singular videos on and not just have the bulk, you know, thing that you've seen on a few of my videos before, like at the car meets and stuff like that, where I try to condense it to about a 20 to 25 minute video, which I haven't been doing many of those lately. I've been taking pictures and editing them into a video. Um, but, you know, it's just because... People were actually getting upset with me filming the cars and due to a misunderstanding in one of my videos. And now I haven't been doing that since then because the misunderstanding was there was um, the first one that I did of the car meets. I was um, mentioning flaws in the vehicles and it wasn't to demean the car or the owner or anything like that. It was just to show that, hey, it doesn't matter what you bring, it'll be fine, right? It can be a show quality, amazing car, or it can be a ratty car like mine. 
Um, but yeah, and unfortunately, some people got upset about that. And uh, that video is still up, though. I haven't deleted that video. It's just, yeah. Um, and there was one guy in particular that went on a full-on rant and attacked me on Facebook. Um, I had to eventually just block him because I was done. And yeah, so that's the thing. Um, and it, I just saw your one comment there that your dad was a Volkswagen salesman back in the day. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, old Volkswagens are actually pretty neat. I know a little bit about them, not as much as, you know, some people. But my main focus has been classic American cars. Um, German cars and... Yeah, oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, and, you know, like, vintage Volkswagens were incredible. And they were super reliable, too, back in the day. It's not like Volkswagens now, where it seems like they break quite often. Um, and it's very, very sad. And that's a lot of modern cars nowadays, too. I, you know... I would love to have an old bug or actually, honestly, an old split window bus. Oh, hey, Pilo. So actually the giveaway, and I've uh, showed this a couple, a few times, so apologies for everybody that has seen this uh, a couple of times at this point. I think three or four. But um, it's this carburetor. This carburetor is a off of a 1967 to 69, because the numbers don't quite tell me 100%. It just says late 60s that way. 600 CFM Holly carburetor. It's got the vacuum secondaries on it, and it is in very good shape. It's just been sitting a while. It needs to be going through, cleaned out, probably needs new gaskets and stuff like that. So you'll need a carp kit for it, but still. Um, this carburetor, and this is, you know, it's a fairly heavy carburetor too. It's because it's a vintage carb. And apologies for the kind of the shaky cam. It's whenever I put this back down on the table, it does that. I don't have a stabilization here on YouTube Live. Um, I do that, have stabilization in my videos, but not live. So it's unfortunate I can't put that here, but that's fine. Um, but yeah, so that stuff will be coming out. And actually, I might be, because um, after the wedding, actually, on Sunday, I'm going to be fairly close to my buddy down in uh, Carmagee. At that point, it'll be like an hour drive, but so worth it. I might go down there and film some of his stuff, and you guys will finally get to see that 302 that we're going to shove in my car. Because I i haven't actually seen it in person either, so I want to see this. And I can't wait. And for those of you that don't know, this 302 that I'm getting put in Stitch, it is a later roller uh, motor. Um, <laughs> um, it's a later style roller motor, which they started in, I believe, 1986. Um, it came out of a Capri, but I don't think it was original to that Capri, but I could be wrong. Um, this thing is fully built out, though. It's got sealed power pistons. It's got aluminum heads. It has a Edelbrock Performer intake with a Demon Carb, and it has a Moroso oil pan. So, you know, it's like, this thing is pretty bitchin'. And it'll make that car probably mid-300s, maybe even as high as about 400-ish horsepower. So, it'll go from 92 horsepower and 165 pounds of torque to around 350 400 horse and probably closer to 450 ish torque um so i can't wait for that it'll be so much fun and that'll definitely wake that car up a lot because and what um what led me to actually doing this motor swap um is honestly i was heading up to edmonton um, on actually there's a group that I'm part of called No Boys Allowed and basically it just fights the sexism within the uh, car community and for those that get upset with the name well to be honest that was kind of the point um, if you're kind of that rude person in the car hobby and if it upsets you that was you know that's the reason why it's named that um, and so yeah now, it doesn't mean that we don't have events that men can come to, but there are some women-only events that we have, and it's quite fun, and honestly, the community is awesome. But anyways, that was a few weeks ago. I did a little uh, video on that. And, yeah, so cruising up to Edmonton, um, about, I was near Leduke, I think. And, um, yeah. Seen a beetle with a coyote. I've never seen a coyote, coyote, but I have seen a 426 hammering on a beetle. So he sat beside it. <laughs> it's pretty nuts, actually. But um, anyways, when I was going up to Edmonton, 
on this cruise, because actually a couple of the girls from Calgary were cruising up and um, meeting the Edmonton folk of this specific group. So going up there, you know, my car, I was actually not struggling at all. It's just struggling to keep up to them because they're much faster cars and they were cannonballing as opposed to me that was just cruising. So I actually got my car up to 160 kilometers an hour. For those of you that don't know, that is 100 miles an hour, which is the fastest that car has ever gone. Um, but near Leduc, the louvers attempted to fly off my car, so I had to pull over on the side of the highway, which I wasn't at a rest area or anything like that, so it was a little sketchy, but, um, you know, I got them back on tight. It's all good now. They should be fine. But, um, then after that, it's just like, okay, getting back up to speed. And I knew my car was slow. I've done speed tests. I know how slow it is, but nothing actually puts into perspective how slow your car is when you need to quickly approach highway speeds and you can't <laughs> you know it took me because uh everybody's doing about a buck 20 buck 30 kilometers an hour on the highway which is around 70 miles an hour and yeah i always couldn't really get up to speed fast enough so it was actually a very dangerous situation so that's why i'm putting the 302 in the car it'll be a much better monster and much better car than it is in its current configuration so I'll miss the inline six, but it kind of had to happen because as well, my um, plans with the inline six got dashed after the, um, <laughs> nice, um, after the, um, after the head got stolen that I was going to put on the motor, I just decided, you know what, I'm not going to do the inline six anymore. And... Uh, my rear gear ratio is 273 in the car right now. Now, I was going to pick up a set of 373s that is an 8.8 with limited slip to put in the car. But with this 302, I might not do that anymore. I might try and find some 323s or 308s, something like that, but still limited slip, um, and make it better. So, yeah, and also with a C4 automatic tranny, it's slow. Like, if it was a, a manual, it would have been a little better, but, you know... Yeah, well, no, I actually do have torque. It's just gear ratios don't really help me get up to speed. But even if I put, for example, a 373 in it, it would still be very gutless and would still be so underpowered. It just wouldn't do what I needed to do. Because, like, what my initial plan was with the car, there it has the 200 inline six um, with the um, C4 automatic and a 273 7.5 open rear end. And the thing is, I was getting a ported and polished 250 inline six head that had a removable intake on it. It had an Edelbrock four barrel intake off of what? I don't know, but they adapted it to fit. And it had a two barrel adapter, which I actually have an Autolite 2100 carburetor in my shed that I was going to actually put on that, um, um, on that car. And unfortunately, um, the head got stolen. So that changed my plans. And now I'm putting the 302 in the car. Um, that I was going to put in Lilo, actually. So, you know, it, it did work out to a certain extent to use the 302. But, yeah, I was just... It's not quite what I wanted for the car. And now it's not going to be very dailyable when I do that. Because, yes, it is going to get a manual transmission as well. And, yeah... And see, I'm not surprised to hear that your Trans Am has um, around those that, that ratio in the rear, to be honest, because in the late 70s, they were all about even fuel economy, even with, like, the big block ones. You know, they only had, I think most of them had, like, 290 gears or something like that that I've seen. Um, some of them with even less, like, even the old Lincolns, for example, from the late 70s, they actually had a, um, they had 259s, I want to say it was, to try and get more economy. But the problem is when you did that, you needed to pin it everywhere. And so you weren't really getting good economy at that point. Um, 342s? Okay. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just used to seeing more highway gears. But to be honest, a lot of the Canadian variant vehicles got more highway gears versus more city gears. So, yeah, that's fine. You know, like economy, right? And as opposed to, you know, like late 60s, early, like early 70s, like 71, you, 
I've seen more of those, uh, you know, 383s, 373s, that sort of stuff. Um, yeah, see, mine doesn't. Um, now, my carburetor needs a rebuild. I have a rebuild kit, but I'm not going to rebuild it. Um, to be honest, it's just... I don't really want to rebuild a one-barrel poly carburetor. It just doesn't make sense to me. Um, but, you know, and my car from the factory had... What was it? Um, it was 92, I believe, horsepower and 160 foot-pounds of torque. So, and a 2,648-pound car, not too shabby. But it... Just with the gearing and stuff, and with the C4. Um... <laughs> oh, exactly. Um, you know, and like, don't get me wrong, it would help, but the 302, I think, is just better for the car in the end. And I will just find something else, like, for example, the 79 Pinto that I checked out today. Um, heard it run, I put it in gear, and just, you know, lurched it forward a little bit, and it did do that but then it's stalled out it's like this thing has been sitting for a long time so you know it's been uh has last been registered in 1999 but it had a bunch of work recently done to it so you know we'll see um now see a lot of people have mentioned the 300 inline six i've never actually seen one of those in a fox body um it would be interesting but i'm not gonna do that swap in my car honestly because a, I don't have the fabrication skills to do anything like that. And honestly, I don't know if anybody I know really does 100%. Because you're such an, an unknown territory putting a 300 inline 6, which is a much bigger engine than the, than the uh, 200s were. Um, yeah, and it's definitely tall. It's tall and it's longer, too. Like, it's longer by, I think, about 8 inches or something like that. And in the... Um, in the Fox body with the inline six, it uh, um, it's not too bad for space or anything like that. But I have a feeling with the three hundred now, if I did, because and I think the three hundreds were an extra like two to, it was like two to five inches or something like that taller than the two uh, hundreds and about eight ish inches longer. So it makes it a little tough to try and put that in that car. But I have seen like twelve valve coming swap so it's definitely possible that somebody could do that uh there's a guy actually on instagram called cold sang and yeah it's a 12 valve coming for that um yeah i know i we know the uh, 300 inline six um yeah i was gonna say uh yours probably would have had like like i said something around there um from the factory and yes the 300 inline six came in the trucks only um, but as well as its sister engine was the 240, which was actually the base engine in the trucks. But most people just upgraded to the 300 and was done. And they used 300 right up until I think it was 1997, 96, somewhere in there. They used it for a very long time. And, you know, they, they just modernized it throughout the years. And it was honestly a great motor. Like, I would love to find one of those later 300 inline sixes with the fuel injection and actually put it in an old car. It would be very interesting to do that. I don't know what exactly I put it in. Maybe try and find, uh, you know, like a Zephyr wagon or something. It would be pretty dope to do that with. But we'll see. Um, you know, see what the future holds for me finding cars and stuff like that because i find a bunch of different weird cars all the time and for me the weirder and cooler the car is the more i like it um and yeah that's why i really dig my my car which is the 81 mustang with the 200 inline six and it is a notchback that has a one year only color on the interior which is the pewter and it's gray pewter metallic on the outside i really do dig the color um, it is a little ratty though, because, you know, it wasn't taken care of the paint that well. And even the, for example, the passenger door is tan that is off of, I think an 83 car. So, you know, maybe an 84 car actually, because I know the 83s for sure. I can't remember if they changed it in 84 or 85, where on both sides of the car you've got the pouches on the bottom. This just has the carpet, so it's an earlier door. Um, yeah, oh, definitely. Um, you know, I'm, we'll see what comes out. 
and yeah, and that doesn't shock me for a big block Trans Am from the late seventies to have those highway gears on them to, for just trying to do economy. Because yeah, like what was mentioned, and I mean, I knew this, but because uh, you didn't really have overdrive gears. And what was interesting though is that like over in Japan and Europe and stuff like that, they were doing five speeds in cars well before the Americans tried it. Because like um, the earliest American car to have it actually i think it was the ford capri in the 70s but it was like the only car that could have a five speed i believe i could be wrong on that though they may have had four speeds but um everybody else adapted five speeds in the 80s and even chevrolet stuck with and it's a great transmission but honestly they should have did away with it a long time ago is in the trucks they had a three speed that had a bolo gear in it too so it was terrible for economy um my uncle's truck he has a 77 c20 that has uh it's a 350 four bolt main that has dual exhaust on it and it was honestly a quite rare truck um but with a three speed manual with the bolo so yeah um and it had a it has 410 gears in it so it's not exactly um Not exactly one of those, hey, um, super economy things. And honestly, I want to actually, I want that truck. And I want to, there's two things I would do to it, potentially three. Um, well, actually, there would be three things I would do to it, potentially four, I should say. Because that 350, you know, it's got a four barrel car about it and everything. It's got good power. And if you guys know about trucks in the late 70s, well, they actually had the higher compression motors that were kind of gone away with in the cars right so they actually made more power and stuff like that uh, because they were exempt if your vehicle weighed over six thousand pounds to needing any um economy stuff like or not economy but i should say um emissions so you know you didn't need a kind of converter you didn't need a smog pump anything like that unless if you lived in like california where it would be required but through the rest not really and that's why, like, for example, the fastest car in North America in 1978 was the Dodge Little Red Express that had a 360 police interceptor motor and with a 727 back behind it. Uh, it was a short box step side that had stacks. And, you know, it was beating up on, like, Ferraris and Lamborghinis back in the day. It was pretty cool, actually. Um, you know, and... It really didn't get dethroned until the 80s for being the fastest uh, car in North America at the time. So, pretty cool, honestly. I love those trucks, and I would love to have one. Uh, yeah, that'd be nice. And, uh, yeah, and actually, um, there was the Warlock as well, but they weren't the performance-oriented truck, though. The Little Red Express, and if you didn't know... There was a really cool version of the um, of the Little Red Express, and it was called the Midnight Express, and it was spelt M I D N I T E. And these trucks were a Little Red Express, but with the Warlock treatment, so they were black on gold, not red on gold. So they were honestly a. Um, very cool and super super rare truck i've only seen one um the warlocks back in the day were a single cab short box step side truck that uh they were black typically although you could see them in i believe green and maybe be able to get them in red um and they had gold pinstriping along the side and it was honestly just a gorgeous truck now you could get those in the four by four as well um, Little, Red, Little Red Express was rear-wheel drive only. So, very cool trucks, and they had the same treatment, more or less, as Little Red Express, but they didn't have the, uh, the stacks, and they didn't have the police interceptor engine in them. So, <laughs> we'll see, and that's the thing, uh, with Mopars as well, you can go back to the early 70s, and it was in 1970 or 71 where the Dodge Demon name actually came out. 
Now they only used it for a couple of years and honestly those early demons are so cool. It's essentially a dodge dart sport that is modified with a cooler front end and slightly cooler taillights. And there's a couple other minor differences between them but for the most part it's about the same. And um, you know and you could get them uh, the demons were V8 only if I remember correctly but you know you could have the 318, 360 and that was it. Um, didn't have and 340s as well I should say um, and they may yeah they never put the 360 in the demon to my knowledge and honestly yeah it was just they're really cool I'd love to have one but uh, you know that's the thing and actually um, 71 Duster is the same car it's just uh, the only difference is the taillights um, they had a cooler taillight design than the Dark Sports did they had the vertical bars versus the horizontal bars so, um, and actually, my dad just texted me if I wanted food, so I'm just gonna, sorry guys, just one second here. Um, uh, oh my god, okay, really? Thanks. Sorry guys, just one moment. There we go, sorry, um, apologies for that. Um... Yeah, and the new ones are just insane. They only made them for one year, which was back in 2018. And they had 808 horsepower out of the box. But they actually made 840 horsepower when you put them on race gas and you put the tune in it. And also, what was cool about the Demons is every option was $1. So the cars came standard with... Okay, they were actually a loaded car, but they only had... Uh, the driver's seat. There was no passenger seat and no rear seat. Now you could buy and just like there was no carpet in the back either like in the trunk. Now for one dollar you can get the passenger seat put back in. One dollar you can get the rear seat put back in. And one dollar you could get the um, the trunk liner and everything put back in. So um, <laughs> you want steak and lobster? Well no he's getting McDonald's so I don't think I'll be getting steak and lobster either. Um, I'll just be getting a chicken nugget meal. Um, but yeah, and honestly, I have a ton of knowledge on cars because I live and breathe them, you know? Where most people, this is just a casual hobby. For me, it's just like, my life is cars. I am constantly looking at cars. I am constantly thinking about them, thinking about what I'm going to do to my car. Like, I have an end vision for any car I buy. I have an end vision of what it's going to look like. Like, immediately, I can see that's how it's going to look. Um, which a lot of people can't see that. Now, that end goal for Stitch, for example, has changed a couple of times, but it was um, very, very um, fun and stuff like that because originally my car was going to go the gray and then the bottom body line was going to go uh, this dark red, almost like a Bondo red color, but actual paint. And instead... Um, it is now going to go gray on blue, like a dark blue to match the, in the seats that I'm going to put in the car. So I can't wait for that. It's also going to be getting some body mods. Oh, hey, Paul the Fox. Nice to see you. Um, thanks for joining the live stream. This has been going actually for a lot longer than I thought it was going to, but welcome to live streams. You never know how far they're going to go. And in the beginning, you know, there was hardly anybody in here and now... There's seven of you, but we did it. We're up to like 17 at one point. So that's pretty cool. Um, and if you guys can, for any of you that haven't, if you hit the like button, which you can see, well, I see it right here, but it will be somewhere else for you guys. Um, we're up to 17 likes on the video and I really do appreciate every single one of you um, that does that. And every single like actually makes the algorithm see Um, makes the YouTube algorithm show this to more people and stuff like that. So it really does help me out. Thank you. Sorry. My brain is not functioning 100%. Yours lasts like three hours. Hang on. I need to see what you were talking about here. Um, Uber Eats Dad Edition. <laughs> I'm not sure what you were referring to. Oh, yeah. Your, your live streams, yeah, last about three hours, give or take. Especially when I'm on them because we... Problem is... I'm ADD and so are you. So we both have this like, okay, we need to talk, 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 talk. And yeah, 
There you go. Um, and I love, honestly, and if you guys haven't actually, go check out Novataz's channel. He has a, um, he has a cool channel and he hasn't been doing many updates on his vehicles lately, but he's been in the process of moving. So he will get some more content on his Firebird and stuff like that because, you know, he's actually putting, um, he's putting uh, Holly, our Holly Sniper EFI system on that motor. And it'll be really badass. He has a 70s, 70s, I think it's like a 79 Trans Am. That is very cool that he's been talking about in the chat here. Um, you know, and he named that thing, uh, Gene Gray. It's a very cool car. <laughs> well, hey, I appreciate you, uh, coming out and supporting the channel. Because, uh, yeah, um, I'm not on his live streams every week that he does them, and he hasn't done them for a couple of weeks because of the move. Um, and that as well, that your, your cars are all over the place, so, you know, and I get it. Um... Yeah, I look forward to when you actually put out videos again to watch your videos. Because to be honest, I haven't watched a ton of your content yet. But I follow so many YouTubers, it gets really hard to follow everybody's channel. So, you know, like uh, one of uh, one of my favorite YouTubers is um, <laughs> um, is actually Teen Mechanic. In which if you guys haven't been following him... Please do so here on YouTube. He's got a smaller channel of only about a 390-ish subscribers. I try and promote him anytime I can. And, you know, actually how we met, he's only 15 years old. We met when I was selling a 78 Dodge Monaco that was a one owner. And it needed quite a bit of work, but it was in very good shape overall. The, the floors were mints. The frame rails were good. It was just the rockers were gone. Um, especially on the one side, it was worse than the other. And there was a little bit on the rear quarters, but other than that, rust-wise, it was great. Um, <laughs> yeah, it was honestly very, very uh, cool to meet him. And I sold that to him, and I think it was like January. And then what happened was he did a couple of videos on it. Like he put a stereo in it, and he got the brakes functional, and he attempted to rebuild the worst carburetor on the planet which is a thermo quad um that motor originally had the honestly even though the lean burn carburetors aren't great i think the lean burn carburetor is better than a thermo quad because and if you guys don't know about the thermo quad carbs they had a plastic body for example with like this carburetor that i'm giving away um so the body which is right here, um, that um, was plastic. And it was just a terrible design. No, he doesn't like them. It's what, with David Freiberger, it's an easy carburetor to find and it's cheap. That's what he likes about them. He hates the design, honestly, because they are garbage. Um, and it's the plastic body. And the problem is, when they're new, they're not so bad. But... Over time, they start to warp and degrade, and, you know, it was bad. Um, see, I would take a Carter over as well. And, oh, thanks for uh, joining the live stream, Novataz. Uh, even if it was for a short while, I definitely appreciate you coming out. Um, good luck with your move, and, uh, yeah, I can't wait for you to start making more content in the future. Um... Yeah, and you guys are mentioning not great carburetors either, but trust me, those are better than a thermo quad. Um, like uh, it was, I can't remember if it was Freiburger or if it was <laughs> um, Finnegan. Basically, they this is when they were doing the motor swap from the motorhome into the the Charger, which is the General Mayhem, and it had a thermo quad on it. <coughs> Um, and basically what he said was the only carburetor, it's, uh, the thermal quad is the only carburetor that punishes you for going full throttle. And it's true. You go full throttle with a thermal quad that isn't right. It'll just backfire and everything. And it's, you know, pretty bad. And well, Hey Paul, I definitely appreciate you coming out and checking out the live stream as well and stuff like that. Um, and since he just joined, I should 
show off the carburetor a little more and say a little more details. Um, because some of you have seen this a few times. But this is the giveaway, and it's a Holly 600 CFM carburetor that came off of a late 60s Ford V8. Now, whether this is from a 302 up to a 428, I don't know. So, yeah, but it's a Holly 600 CFM. It's vacuum secondaries, you know. It's honestly in very good shape. It just needs a good cleaning and being gone through with, like, a... Uh, new gaskets and stuff like that so uh if you're interested in winning this there will be a post after the live that uh all you have to do very simple be following me on instagram which is kenarinas.garage on instagram and be um and all you gotta do is on the post that i do comment your youtube name make sure you're subscribed to my youtube channel and there you go that you'll be uh, entered for that and it's going to be early september that i give this away and it'll be shipped to your door um for free so, yeah, um, Robert's Garage won the last giveaway, which the last giveaway wasn't quite as impressive as this one. So, you know, <laughs> got to move it up a little bit. And I have a couple of other ideas for later giveaways in the future. But for now, you know, it's, uh, yeah. <laughs> eh, my voice is dying here. Frick. I'm not used to just talking this long when it's just me because... Usually when I do live streams, it's on Novitaz's channel. And yeah, well, hey, um, good luck if you figure out how to uh, follow me on Instagram. <laughs> and I just saw somebody new in the chat, so appreciate you coming out. Um, Country Gas, I think you're from Novitaz's channel, if I'm not mistaken. I've seen you, I believe, in his comments before. So definitely appreciate you coming out and checking out the live stream here, which it's not going to be for too, too much longer. I mean, I might go another 10 or 15 minutes, but uh, it's uh, my voice is starting to die out. You can probably kind of hear that. Um, yeah. <coughs> <coughs> That's why I keep coughing here and my face is turning a little red because I keep coughing. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, you know, this carburetor is what you guys can win. And I can't wait to give this away, um, as well as some other content that is potentially coming to my channel here in the near future. Um, Sunday, I might be after the um, wedding, which I am going to a wedding on Saturday, and then staying at a hotel, actually Saturday night and Friday evening um, in Calgary. And then I might head down to Carmen Gay to my buddy's shop down there and check out the 302. Who knows? I doubt we're going to put it in the car, but we'll see. <laughs> um, and you'll see a video on the motor, and I'll do a couple videos on some of his other stuff that he has, because he, he's got rid of a lot of his stuff, but he still has some stuff. Um, you know? And yeah, it'll be really, really cool. So, yeah. But, um, yeah, anyways, and if, and if you aren't already, please check out my Instagram, which is katarinas.garage. Um, now, if you don't have Instagram, you can also follow me on Katarina's Garage, and you, there will be a post on there that is identical um, to the Instagram post, and all you gotta do is just type in your YouTube name, and you'll be entered into the giveaway, and like I said, it'll be probably uh, early September that that'll be give, given away, and I will do a live video of the giveaway. I'll do the same thing. I will get a bunch of names, you know, written out, and put it in my Pikachu hat, shake it up a bit, take out one name, they win, right? And Robert's stuff hasn't, because Robert's Garage was the last person to win, so congratulations to him. Um, that was my first giveaway, now this is my second. And so, yeah, um, and he's a good guy as well, you should go check out his channel. If you haven't already, uh, he actually does a bunch of stuff with, um, a lot of GM trucks. Um, like, he deals with, right now, mostly late 60s, early 70s, um, Chevy and GMC pickups, and also square bodies as well. So, yeah. Um, well, hey, I, you know, I don't post on Instagram that often. Like, I do, but I don't. And... My Instagram is mostly there to try and promote my YouTube channel, but it doesn't do a very good job with that. My YouTube on its own promotes way better than Instagram does. But 
you do actually get slightly different content on my Instagram as well as my Facebook page as opposed to here on YouTube. You'll you'll get very similar content all the, most of the time, but you'll get some different content as well. Like there'll be pictures, for example, for the wedding that I am going to on Saturday. There'll be some pictures of that on Instagram and on Facebook. So, you know, can't wait for that. Um, it's my cousins getting married. And my family weddings are such a blast because, you know, it's not super taken serious and it's just a lot of joking around and having fun. And, you know, any of my family functions are just such a good time. Nobody argues or anything. It is fantastic. So really can't wait for that. Um, probably we'll be dealing with a bunch of drunks that night. But to be honest, I just did this weekend too. So it's fine. Um, and actually there is a, you know, um, something that I checked out today was a 79 Pinto wagon with a 2.3 in it, and it's a four-speed manual that might be coming home with me, um, that's coming to auction here fairly soon. I think it's August 16th. So, if it goes cheap enough, you'll see it in my driveway. <laughs> um, but, uh, oh yeah, yeah, see, I the trucks, honestly, I, I do like those a lot, um, too. Especially the GMCs, they just got the styling just perfect. Um, well, yeah, I appreciate you coming out, Country Boy Gas Garage. Um, I'm assuming he has a YouTube channel as well, so go check him out. Um, you know, he supported me, so the least I can do is go check out him. I don't believe I'm subscribed to you, so I'll have to check out your content in the future. Um, but yeah, I just, I follow so many people, it's hard to keep track of who all I am subscribed to. I just know of a couple that I am, to be honest. Sometimes I'll look at a video and go, oh, hey, I, I'm subscribed to you, cool. And, you know, I know who it is, but it's just, sometimes I forget. But, um, anyways, I'm, I think I'm going to end it here. This went on quite a while. Um, we are at one hour and 12 minutes. So, I appreciate every single one of you, um coming out and supporting my second ever live. Um, I'm going to be doing more of these lives in the future. And as well, like there's some events that I'll be able to actually get to as well, where I might do some live videos there, but they won't be near as long as this because I have good data, but not quite that good. And unlike some of you Americans, we don't have a limited data plans up here in Canada. So we get capped. I have an eight gigabyte data plan. So, uh, but yeah. Anyways, I appreciate you all coming out. Thank you all so much for watching. And uh, yeah, stay tuned for the post on how to win this carpet right there. So yeah, anyways, I'll chat to you all later. Um, oh, yeah, sorry, Muffins. My voice is starting to give out here. It's been over an hour of just me talking to the chat here and about stories that I have and stuff like that. But you are free to uh, check out, you know, once this video is done to live. You can check out the video that, because it'll be posted on my channel of, you know, me going through the whole spiel and stuff like that. You'll see, you'll hear the spiel a few times on this carburetor. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, I do. Um, the only thing, I need about 300 watch time hours. I don't know what this will put me when this video is done, but uh, it should be quite a bit. So, uh, appreciate every one of you. Thank you all so much. I love you all, and I will see you in the next video. Bye! Yes, I want to stop streaming. Thank you.